Now, before we move on to the next example, I want to give you an alternative approach for solving for these coefficients. And, and it starts actually right here. So we work directly with the original partial fraction decomposition. We don't bother kind of doing common denominators, comparing numerators, or anything like that. What we're going to do is we're going to do some kind of careful multiplication of both sides. So what we're going to do is the first thing we're going to try is we're going to try multiply by x minus 1. So if we multiply both sides by x minus 1, what we get is 1 over x plus 2 squared is equal to a plus b times x minus 1 over x plus 2 c times x minus 1 over x plus 2 squared. And if we put in x equals 1, we get 1 over 9 is equal to a plus 0 plus 0. Got it? All right? Um, then we might try. So you say, well, what if I multiply by x plus 2? Um, well, multiplying both sides by x plus 2 doesn't quite do the job because if I just multiply by x plus 2, I'm still going to have an x plus 2 over here. And so if I want to try, say, evaluating at minus 2, I'll still run into trouble. So actually what I want to do is I want to multiply by the square. So if I multiply both sides by x plus 2 squared, okay, then what I get over here is simply 1 over x minus 1 is equal to a times x plus 2 squared over x minus 1 plus b times x plus 2 plus c. Okay. All right. And if I now plug in x equals minus 2, well, that's going to give me minus 1 over 3 on this side, c on the other side. And now I have the value for c. All right? Once again, it leaves b apparently undetermined. But what we can do is we take derivatives. And you can decide for yourself whether you like this better than, than what we did before. Um, helps that the derivative is not so bad. The derivative of this side is going to be minus 1 over x minus 1 squared. Now, here you're going to get something which, you know, like I guess it looks like quotient rule, right? Um, the, the important thing to keep in mind here is that, well, there is still going to be an x plus 2 and an a and, and some other stuff, right? Because the derivative of the top is going to be 2 times x plus 2, so there's an x plus 2 in there, right? And then I do top times the derivative of the bottom, still an x plus 2. So there's an x plus 2 that's common. Here I just get, when I take the derivative, I get b, and of course c is a constant, it goes away, right? And so now I can put in x equals minus 2. I get minus 1 over 9 on this side. That's going to go to 0. That's just b. And again, I get my coefficients.